Well, thank you so much, all three of you, for being here and at Awesome Con and on this stage. I think everybody they let us out of jail. It. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you. Let me start. I had to rewatch the movie. It had been a while, um, and so I rewatched the movie. And when it started, I'm going, please don't let this be creepy. Like, please don't let it be one of the movies that has not aged well. And luckily, it has aged very well and is not creepy. <laughs> well, that's a really great start to this. Yeah. <laughs> be like, and we're done. But I wanted to ask, there's a really sweet heart at the center of the movie. Can you kind of all speak to that? Um, whether that was something that attracted you to the script, how you remember it, just kind of about how probably glad you are that it's not creepy. <laughs> Well, it might be, I don't know. Um, it, it's really wonderful because John Hughes knew how to make families um, their true selves. And I think it was wonderful in those times to have somebody like a young girl come in and help these boys. It's sort of like the first anti-bullying film, I think, right? Great point. One of the things I noticed about John's work is that there was always this kind of great way he ended them. Everybody sort of winds up a little better off than they started, you know, and he had obviously a lot of heart in his work, and, you know, we wouldn't be here without him. I know I wouldn't. You know, he was a great, great guy to work with and work for, and he was totally collaborative. Yes, keep it up for Mr. Hughes. He can hear you. Now, Are we creeping you out still? No, no, no. no just tell us now. We're yeah, creeping no, you out. I was, Are you sure we're not creeping yeah, you out? No, I'm good. Because if we get creepy, let us know. No, 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 no. That's fine. I certainly will. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so John, you, you had worked with John Hughes before yes, starting this, so was your relationship with him part of the reason that you came on board with this one? Well, you know what, I was a kid and I had done Vacation, which he wrote, uh, but I didn't meet John on that one. So then after that we did Sixteen Candles and Breakfast Club and then it just led to Weird Science. So I was very blessed, very fortunate to, to have him as a collaborator and um, that's how it happened. I didn't, I, you know, it, he picked us, you know. But John loved working with people that he loved working with, and once he believed in you, he believed in you for everything, and that was wonderful too. Yes. Now, he had had some success before then. He was be kind of beginning that upswing of his legendary career. Did you, either of you on set, kind of get the sense that he was going to be kind of the legendary filmmaker that he, that he turned out to be? Well, I, I remember auditioning for it. Um, for Weird Science, and I already thought that he was pretty legendary. Like, I remember thinking, like, this would be the best thing ever. Um, but there was a moment when we were filming when we went into his office, I don't know if you remember this, and, and watched a cut of The Breakfast Club? Yeah, and I, I, um, and I was really moved by the movie, and, um, and at that moment, I, I, like, I knew I was in the presence of something greater. But I felt that way about him, because he'd done all these extraordinary films, and here I was doing a film with Anthony, or Michael, I don't know which one he likes to be called still. Um, so that was a big deal for me. No, I mean, he was, he was really great. Um, I don't even know that John knew, because at the same time, you know, looking back, I'm 51 now, and John was in his mid-30s. I mean, we were all young, and he was just so cool. He was never uptight about his scripts. They were all so well-written, but something he gave us all was this opportunity to really play on set and really have fun. And I think that was one of his talents too. He let us really ad lib and he was kept the set really loose. And this was also before Video Village. There weren't monitors, so he really sat next to the camera. He was with us all through the process. And he would laugh through the takes with you. He would conspire between takes and try to make it better. He was always in search of making the scene better somehow without trying to command the set or, or be the boss. He well, wait a minute. He was the biggest kid on the set. He was. I mean, yeah, I was right. always he worried was. he was going to trip over his shoelaces because yeah. they were always undone. Yeah, he was wearing high tops all the time. You're right, Kelly. And he loved music. That was a huge part of his work. Um, obviously, he was great with soundtracks and all that, but he really integrated into all the scripts, too. So he was thinking on a lot of different levels. But, you know, as Kelly said, he was the biggest kid on the set. He loved it. He loved what he did, you know. I mean, I imagine that it's difficult when you're a younger actor, you probably don't get a chance to play a lot. It's probably very much a, here's your words, yes. say the words the way I want you to say. So that must have been a really, to be able to collaborate at that age must have been something really extraordinary. Absolutely, absolutely. And he gave that gift to all of us, you know, I mean, he really was, he was really about that, you know, making it better in any way possible. But I Enjoying the day, too. I didn't really have to make it better. It was all on the page for me. It was, it was very much there, and uh, I think that was his talent, too. 
I mean, um, I'm going to ask another question, but if people want to step to the begin stepping to the microphones for, for their questions in a nice, calm, non-stampede fashion, but kind of going back to how young you guys were on the set, um, were, was there any sort of, when you get the script and you get the concept, was it at all unnerving when you knew she was going to show up? and be gorgeous and awesome and, you know, was there, I, I imagine, having never been a teenage boy, that there might have been some jitters. <laughs> I could have killed them in the shower scene because they had the giggles. I had band-aids here and little Polish mil military underwear and they couldn't stop laughing. And so what should have taken only a, about an hour took a few days. Yeah. <laughs> Which we were really sad about. Like. Every Everybody was just hoping that would go by so quick, and it didn't. Who's old enough to remember those Sea Breeze commercials, right? Where the girl would walk by, and it was like a wind went with her. Every Kelly would walk by, and she was so cool. She put everybody ease, but honestly, all the men and women on the set were like, what the hell just happened? It was just but it, I think also, I mean, I, I think, I don't, I'm not going to speak for you, but... Um, I won't speak for you either. All right. Um, I, I was 15, you know, and like the... I know, like, and I had to kiss you. <laughs> I'd probably be arrested today. I, 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 like to think that, yeah, I, th I like to think that you got to kiss me. <laughs> um, but, like, there was a, for me, there was a kind of abandon in my interactions with Kelly, because, like, there was no chance that I would ever, like, be able to, like, I had no game with, with a woman who looked like that, who was that age, so it was like, yeah, okay, you know? All right, so I consistently started over here in my panel, so I'm going to mix it up, and I'm going to start over here with you. Hi. Hello. Hello. Um, I have a question for all three of y'all. Um, what is your favorite moment on set of Film and Wear Science? Going home. No, just kidding. <laughs> the shower scene. The shower scene, scene. yeah. Uh, what was my, my favorite was when I did the scene at his parents' house. Oh. And I pull the gun out, and, <laughs> I, and I tell Al, Love you're that. out of shape, I'm going to kick your ass, yeah. <laughs> Soiree? What is, I think that means party, honey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got yeah. one, yeah? Yeah, uh, I mean, there were, it was a great set to work on. It was just really fun. There were a lot of um, really fun parts. I guess, it, like, one thing that I remember really well um, was we were standing in that blue kitchen, and it was between shots, and um, and John was talking to us and, and like giving us direction, and it was not like a lighthearted moment. It was just us working, and then like nonchalantly, he was like nodding, and he reached back and he ate a blue potato chip. And, like those were not for eating; they, they were like spray painted for real. And, and um, then he just kept on going. And then later, I was like, "What, dude? That was what did you do?" And he was like, "Anything for a laugh, man." And I just remember thinking, "Like, wow, like that's super cool." Yes. Commitment. Thank Thanks. Thank you. Name's Anthony, by the way. Thanks. Nice oh, to meet you, Anthony. Thanks, Anthony. Nice to meet you all, too. You too, buddy. Hi, and over here. Um, yes, my name's Harold from Stafford, Virginia. Um, first of all, thank you all for coming. We really appreciate you guys taking the time to come out. And oh, thanks for having us. This is a thank lot of fun. Everybody here is so thank nice. Thank you guys. No audience, no us. So my question is for Mr. Hall. Um, when you guys were filming the scene where you're drunk in the back of the car, where did that voice come from? Was that something that Hughes told you to do or was that something that just came from you or what? Because that's the funniest scene for me in that whole movie. It had me rolling and it still has me rolling oh, to this day. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. You know what it was? I, John was great and often I would be at his house on the weekends with his wife and his kids. I was like the third son in their family. And if you remember in Home Alone, I told some, some of the folks here yesterday this story. You know, at the end of the film, Home Alone, where he captures Daniel um, Stern and Joe Pesci by using the old Laurel and Hardy films. So when we go to John's house on the weekend, he we would watch everything from Laurel and Hardy to Abbott and Costello to the late, great Richard Pryor. And so what happened was I would start imitating Richard Pryor because one weekend, probably on 16 Candles or something, I got into sort of imitating Richard Pryor. There was this old character he used to do called Mudbone. Yep. And it was kind of like a spin on that. So it was basically me making John laugh, imitating Richard Pryor and he got a kick out of it, and I was just blown away. I mean, I was this scrawny little kid. I didn't even know what the hell I was doing. And he was like, we're gonna do that, you know? And so the voice in the Breakfast Club kind of became the setup for the, for the weird science bit. Uh, and so that's, you know, we just basically kind of ad-libbed all that, right? I mean, it was, it was, some of it was written, but he was really great about kind of setting 
the scene, and we just kind of ad libbed a lot of it, so it was fun. You know. Yeah, but you're a comic genius. I'm an out of work yeah. actor. <laughs> Thank you, you very all. much. Thanks, man. Hi, yeah. Hi, Eric from Seattle. Hi, Eric. Um, Hello, Eric. Uh, Eric, can you explain the things in your head to us all? Or uh, yeah, have you seen the movie Real Genius? Oh, that's where it's from. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. I love toxic waste. Very good, sir. Thank you. Uh, Danny Elfman has said that Weird Science was the worst song that he has ever done. It is the low point of his career. What was the hardest or worst part of this movie for you? Hearing that. Thank you. <laughs> Why do artists do interviews sometimes? Anyway, that's weird that he said that. I thought he was always great. Hmm. I don't know. What was the question again? I forgot. I was thinking about the Danny Elfman being bitter. <laughs> The, the worst or hardest part of this film? There was nothing hard about it. I mean, we, like we've said, we just had such a great time. Um, and we shot on location, and we were in John's backyard, and it was just really cool. Everybody comes to the set, I think, with a different vibe when you're doing a comedy. It's a lighter quality of set, you know? And so we all just benefited from that. And he set the tone, and we all just had a good time. We were all kids just making a film. You know, there was nothing really hard about it, for me, personally. But thank you. Thank you. And back to Danny Elfman. He should really lighten up a little bit. <laughs> he really should. I know. So, but when you're on a set like that, I mean, how much harder, how hard was it for you guys to leave when it was done? I mean, was it just, I mean, I know sometimes you, it's just another job. You show up, you put in your hours, you're done. That doesn't seem to be the case here. Well, I think you leave, but emotionally you, you always stay with it. And I think that we're friends and... It's something that just stays with us. I don't think you ever really leave. Well, yeah, I feel, I feel the same way. I, I feel like it was a really great experience. There wasn't a lot of downside to it, and, um, and I don't think you ever do leave. But I, but I also feel like there are times when being a teenage actor is a little bit isolating. Not, not 100%, and it would really help to have you two on the set, but I was a really nerdy kid. Um, and I got along really well with the crew, but I also knew that it was their job to get along with me, and that's weird, you know? Um, and I wanted to have a bunch of people to play Dungeons and Dragons with and read comic Woo! books with, and there are my nerds, all right. You, you might have some here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, fifth edition rules. Um, uh, and so it, it can be a little bit lonely, I think, especially like at night when you're in your hotel room and you don't have any friends and, um, you're just kind of on your own. I also felt sorry for the kids because I wasn't in school, I was older, but you know, you would have to do all these scenes and then they'd have to be in school the whole time too, so you didn't have any downtime either. Right, yeah. In terms of the end for me, it was always like bittersweet. It's like going, you know, leaving at the end of a school year or, or you know, when you go to camp as a kid, it was always kind of bittersweet, you know, because you're going to miss people and, uh, and you love them, you love the experience of it, so I have nothing but great memories. So, uh, over here. Hi, y'all. I'm Hi. Brad. I'm up the road in Baltimore. And Go Ravens, Brad. <laughs> hey. I wish I played football, but I don't. <laughs> uh, so, listen, uh, one of the most important parts of this film, uh, and one of the pieces that's missing from this panel, is Bill Paxton. And yeah. I, I miss him so much. He's such an amazing actor. Uh, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about your experiences. I mean, you all had very... Uh, <laughs> different scenes with him, um, so I was curious if your experience is working with Bill. Yeah, I, I, um, I, you know the game here, right? Like, we, this is the place where you say nice things about people, and we're lucky with Weird Science that um, there's no, nothing bad to be said. But without exaggeration, Bill is the nicest, most helpful person I've worked with. Everybody was great on that set. I love both of you. I loved everybody there. I loved John. But Bill um, was the nicest guy on the set, very helpful, and, um, and uh, very easily became, um, he easily slipped into the role of giving advice without making it seem like he was becoming a teacher. And that was really, that was really helpful to me, and I, I really respected him, and I loved him, and, um, and, I, and I cherished the time that I had with him. Yeah, I did too, and... Uh... It's funny, when you look at a film and you see all your scenes together, it looks like you spend more time together, but actually on films, you don't always spend that much time with people. 
so I didn't get to know him that well, but he was definitely just a beautiful human being and taken way, way too soon. I love Bill a lot. And like Alon said, he really was a, a wonderful guy. He had a great spirit about him. He loved the process of it. He was really excited to be there, you know, and he, and he was, um, you know, I just thought of Luke Perry for some reason. You know, yeah. you hear great things about his legacy. Yep. And it's that thing that, like, when you watch Ellen, she says, right, like, be kind to everybody. He really, his first instinct was kindness, you know. Um, he was awesome. We would hang out on the weekends. He introduced me to his friends. He taught me about Buster Keaton. He taught me about, uh, you know, a lot of different things. But he had a great laugh. He was really quick to laugh and joke. And he was just a great guy on set. Like, like Kelly and Ilana said, he just really had a wonderful spirit. Um, and it was natural, it wasn't forced, it was really genuine, and, uh, and everybody loved Bill. He was the life of the set in many ways, you know. He was and you would great. never know that he was sick. I mean, I, I, I guess he'd been sick for a long time, and, and nobody knew. I mean, with these, particularly speaking of John Hughes and, and Bill Paxton, and just what seems to be the overall vibe of this film, how did that affect you going forward, or, I mean, I imagine your careers would be different if you started out working with guys who were jerks or who weren't interested in your opinions or anything like that. Did, did this show you the way a film set was supposed to be going forward? That's a great point. I, I would go with the, your, the latter statement. Yeah, it did. It taught me that, first of all, it's a microcosm of life or family or anything. And, you know, you got to work in a group. You got to get along with people. You got to enjoy the process. You got to uh, know that you're just one of a part of a bigger thing, you know, and um, yeah, for me it did. He did set the tone. I mean, I've, I've told many of the people, nice folks I've met here today, that in my whole career since then, I've never had anybody that even came close to John because there was a love that he had for it. And, um, you know, he really established relationships with all of us. He made sure he set time and, and had real conversations about what we were doing, even though it was fun and silly. He was really great. And so for me, yeah, I mean, I, I've always sort of compared you know, our work with him and, and working with him on a few other films. Um, and, you know, nothing compares to him. He's really, he really stood alone. He was an amazing guy. Yeah. And, and how about for you two? Is that the case? Yeah, I mean, um, I guess a little bit. I, I, I really have very positive memories of all the, all the sets that I was on. I don't think there was a single set that I... Ex <laughs> There was, one, um, there was one TV show that I did an episode of, one episode. It was the last job I ever had, because um, I quit acting when I was 22, so this is just the very last one. And I, yeah, but even that one, um, I hated the script and I hated the show, but the people were really nice and I loved all of them. So um, Weird Science was great, but I wouldn't say that it set the tone because um, I just really liked um, everybody I, I worked with most of the time. I, I'd um, only, I'd never done a film. I had a uh, woman in red was in the can and I'd worked with uh, Gene Wilder and Gilda Radner and that was just an extraordinary experience. And to go from that to weird science, I thought it was all gonna be like that. And then I did Hard to Watch or something, I think it's called Hard to Watch, Hard to Believe or something, Hard to Kill. And that was awful. So um, yeah, so weird science was terrific. I've done a few decades of hard to watch. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? The checks show up. And I'm very grateful. Hi, yes, over here. Hi, I'm Judy from Germantown, Maryland. Hello, Judy. Hi, Hi Judy. Thank you guys for being here. I'm so excited. Thank uh, you. I grew up with you guys. Kelly, you didn't age. You should have aged. <laughs> you're, you're beautiful. <laughs> anyway, she's, she's gorgeous. Isn't she? Not bad for a grandma. Yeah, I did try to wear the shorts years ago, the gym, the last gym outfit you had in the last scene. Oh my goodness. I know, nobody could do that, but um, you pulled it off wonderfully. Oh, I, I'd be a close second, maybe. Yeah. You did, you had a nice ass in 85. Did he? Okay. You had a nice ass in 85. Kids, earmuffs, yeah. earmuffs, earmuff it. So like you said, you guys had fun on the set. Is there any scene that you guys, that ended up in the movie that wasn't so exactly scripted the way it was or John decided hey this is going to go in versus something else or that you did that didn't get in the movie some of my best works on the floor <laughs> oh. I honestly can't remember the answer to that because he was so fluid that that feel like it felt like it changed every day like we always shot the script but we were always playing and making up stuff so I, I really can't recall 
I don't remember what, if there anything was cut out that was shot. Do you guys remember? Yeah, I don't. And if I'm being honest, I don't have the I don't have the easiest time watching myself. So it's been a, it's been a minute since I've seen that movie. But remember when we were filming? Um, part of this is in there, I think, when we're wearing our suits before they get turned cool, right? In the like in the upstairs, and and we had like. Um, it was the idea of it was so funny, but I don't know. I, I, but it didn't. I don't think it made it in that we had like a whole roll of quarters in each of our pockets, and we were like nervously like jiggling the change oh, yeah, yeah, while we were doing it. I don't think that I don't think that made it into the film, oh, yeah, did yeah, it? You're right. No, because John, I remember. No, that's good. Thank you. I'm shot. My memory's gone. What can I say? Uh, no, I do remember that because it was a bit that he thought was funny. That if we had nothing to do, that we would have both be jingling change. I do remember that. Yeah. I guess that did get cut. You see, kids, at 50, you lose your memory. <laughs> I'm 49, so I'm still good. Great. <laughs> Talk to me next year when you need readers. Anyway. <laughs> I was walking down the road here. remembering stuff. <laughs> over here. Hey, how are you doing? Um, Miriam, DC. I met you all, so it's wonderful to see you all together. I just wanted to say that. Um, but two quick questions. Um, one, what was it like working with Robert Downey Jr.? And two, what was it like to film that incredible slow walk through the mall that uh, Miss LeBrock did? I, that's one of my favorite scenes in the movie. It's funny, that was my first scene in the movie, that whole mall stuff. Uh, it's, it's strange because he was, he was, an, he was no one. And, <laughs> and he was like one of the jerks in the film and he, now he's this enormous star, so uh, good for him. <laughs> He owes me a lot of money. I, I wouldn't and I'm expect just gonna, you to get that. I hear he's pretty hard up. No, I'm kidding. No, right. He's a great guy. Honestly, I've always thought Robert was brilliant. He always made us all laugh. And I mean, I can't think of a, a single comeback in the history of Hollywood that's more impactful. He's a great guy. He's a true blue friend. He's remained a great friend of mine. And uh, I love him. I have nothing but love for him. He's a, he was brilliant. You know, he was really always funny. The stuff that I love was like when they're clowning us, remember, at the mall, and they're behind yeah. the girls. <laughs> yeah, that was great. <laughs> yeah, doing the... <laughs> like all this, like, fit. I mean, he was hilarious. And Rustler, too, our good friend Robert, he was awesome in the film. I mean, yeah, and they, were, they, they had a little bit that attitude on the set, too. Like, I don't remember it's anybody them. telling him how to, how to make fun of us. They were just like, they, <laughs> they were just like, like, ready at the gate. Like, can we do it now? Can we do it now? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Ms. You. Mira. Thanks so much. Hi, over here. Hi. Hi, I'm a fan of all of you on the stage, just for the record. Thank you. Thank you. And Alan, you're welcome to crash my D&D group anytime you want. I'm down, yeah. <laughs> so in the John Hughes movies, we know that music was such a central part of the story and the soundtrack. So what songs would you pick for the soundtrack of your own life? Man Eater. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here she comes. Actually, I think that's written about me. I think so. <laughs> the soundtrack for, your, for my own life? Yeah, I actually have a mixtape. Um, <laughs> uh, I, the thing is, I listen to some pretty obscure stuff, so, um, but I like underproduced um, music that is um, like done in one shot, so if there's mistakes, it stays in there, and it's very casual. So my favorite singer in the world is Kimya Dawson, and um, and I would like her to do the soundtrack to my life very much. She did. She did. Uh, she did a number of the songs for the movie Juno. Oh. I don't really. I can't really pick a song, but what I can tell you guys is that you know, having been with John, like. From 16 Candles on, I would go and hang out with his family, and he had a room in his house. It was amazing. You walk in, and it looked like a record store. He had like literally thousands upon thousands of 12-inch vinyls. And in the corner by a window was his, his, his um, desktop computer. And so I can tell you this, that's, he always wrote to music, and he surrounded himself with music, and he also would take us out to go see music. Like we would go to see all these great blues players and, and, and blues acts in, in Chicago. He would take us to concerts. I mean, he was really awesome. We would go to record stores. I mean, I did a lot of stuff that related to music. He was always turning us on to music, too. He would make mixtapes and hand, us, hand me stuff and to listen to. And, uh, so he was so what would your song be? I don't know. I'm still living. <laughs> Probably Benny Hill, right? Like the theme song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <he's laughs> OK, I'll go with that. Yeah. For the young children, a, a mixtape? 
yeah, a sorry physical about that. piece of music <laughs> that you could record and use it to record songs off the radio when you had no money to buy tapes. It's like a playlist, but janky. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi, over here. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello, sir. Hi. Um, I'm, I'm David from uh, Poolsville, Maryland. Hi, David. Hi, David. Hello. Hi, Dave. <laughs> um, so I was just wondering, um, I just want to say congratulations on making film history of weird science. I'm really glad you enjoyed working on it so much. And I was just wondering, if you, it seems that you've all developed um, a very close relationship with director John Hughes. And I was just wondering, I mean, what would you say are like your favorite um, moments with John Hughes that you enjoyed? Like the, the most, if you, if you could pick like your favorite moment that you had with him, what, what would it be, do you think? <laughs> From morning till night. Morning uh, till night. Yeah, every day. Every day. Every day was special. Uh, yeah. No, honestly, the thing that was cool too, I agree. I mean, we really did. He was a really special guy. And, he, and the other thing too is he involved you in the process. He let you know how things were going to unfold. He really was like totally cool as we described earlier. So it's hard to pick one day, you know? But the thing I remember the most, as I mentioned earlier, was like there was no video village. He just sat next to the camera. You know, he was always right there with you. When we were doing the Breakfast Club, I mean, I really remember scenes that we shot that got intense and emotional and dramatic and all that. And he would literally sit there and cry with you through a take, or he would laugh with you through the take. And um, just that idea of refinement, that he was always about that without being precious or, or bossy or whatever. You know, he was such a great collaborator. And uh, really, he was all the time with him was awesome, you know. But his enthusiasm was contagious, yes. right? And I think um, for me, like, I don't know if there's one moment, but um, a as many of you know, the 80s were different. And, <laughs> and one significant way that they were different is that it was not cool to be a nerd at all. And what that, I think what that translates to is that it wasn't cool if you were a man, at least, um, to have any interests. And John had a lot of interests. And um, when, you, when I looked at him, I could see both a person who is popular and cool and competent and also someone who is nerdy in a lot of the same ways that I was and that was meaningful to me at the time because um, you know nerds in the 80s took a lot of crap. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi over here. Hi my name is Renee and my question is was there ever a part in the movie that made you feel scared or nervous about doing? Good question, Renee. I think that rocket ship for me, remember that thing? When it went through the floor? Because when we were doing those scenes, we had to like reset it and we weren't really sure if it was gonna go back in to the floor. And we shot that on a stage. So that was one thing I remember that was like a special effects deal. And that, do you remember that part, honey? When the rocket goes through the floor? I think. Okay. Well, when you watch it again, we'll talk. <laughs> I was sometimes nervous that I wasn't gonna do a good job. You know, and I was worried about that a little bit, but, um, but it was nice to work with people who reassured me and made me feel better about it. I was nervous about everything because I came into a film that had been filming for quite a little while and um, I'd never done a movie except the one that, you know, I just finished. And so being on a set with John Hughes and, and our friend here was very intimidating for me. And because I had just come into it and had to learn my lines very quickly, that was awkward. But you get through it. And I had a, I had a great team. Thanks, Renee. Thank you, Renee. Hi, over here. Renee, what year were you born? 2000 what, honey? I feel 107, Renee. <laughs> Thanks for that. Really appreciate it, Renee. See you in middle school. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rihanna. I'm from Greenbelt. And, hi, Brianna. Um, hi. hi. Brianna, you look I, like I, a rock star. Yes, I'm, I'm dressed as Jem, if you know what that is. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you are uh, a Renee gem. might not know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I watched the movie for the first time not too long ago. My dad introduced me to it. I loved it, obviously. Um, this question is more so towards Kelly, but anybody on the panel, feel free to answer. I was wondering what your favorite costume on set, the set was. <laughs> I think her favorite was when I was wearing the underwear. <laughs> I mean, I'm just uh, spitballing here, but that's what I would assume. 
Yeah, um, I, I, I think, uh, I don't know, actually. I think the silver dress, they weren't my costumes. I had to go into the other actors' costumes, and we were a different size. So I pretty much just got what was already there, and if it didn't fit, they cut it up the back so it did it, fit. Do, does everybody here know the story that she, the, what happened on the set? Do you want to do you want to say what happened on the set for the other after? We. Uh, well, no, I I I I turned down the role uh, because I was in the South France and I was doing something else and. Uh, oh la di da. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Well, no, I was with Sting. <laughs> As one does. I was with Sting. Somebody and... dropped a name over here. Yeah. <laughs> Hold so, that for me. That was pretty fun, and uh, they said um, we, we've had to fire the actress, or it didn't work out, and would you come and do the film? So I went into a film that had been filming for three weeks, and having only done one film before, it was, it was a big stress to go in and do something like that with very competent actors that were already there. So I did the best I could. Yeah, Thank you, you did great. Thank you. Thank you for... Hey, over here. Oh, hey. I'm Chachi from Baltimore. Hey, Chachi. What about Chachi hey. from Baltimore? <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank you guys for showing up today, and um, thank you for this woman um, signing everything I'm saying right now. The guy in the cowboy hat is very handsome, and I, I love him. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, See, Chachi's got jokes. That, yeah. <laughs> and the last lady was awesome too. Where'd she go? She just disappeared. Yeah. They switch out. Wonderful work, ladies. Right. Oh, working, you're working way harder than all of us. Up every here. every panel they've been here, Wonderful. it has been amazing. Awesome. Wow. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now you know I hate I hate remakes. So hopefully there'll never be a remake of Weird Science. But if there was, and each one of you guys could pick who you want to play, um, a young actor to play your role, who would you pick? I think it'd be hard to replace us. I'm sorry. Oh. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I don't know. I, um... My choice hasn't been born yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he's up there and he's thinking about it. No, I have no idea. That's an interesting question. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Hopefully the, I mean, I, I, yeah. What do you think, buddy? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like um, there's, a, there's a lot of tributes out there, but I feel like uh, I would want Adam Goldberg somehow involved. Awesome. Yeah. And, yes. and so someone from that cast would be a nice... Uh, we would have a sense of completion to it, you know? Right, cool. But actually, they were talking about doing a remake of Weird Science and not oh. having any of us in it. And okay. I think that that would be a mistake. I agree. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So I, uh, we're good on time, and I think if we kind of go lightning round, we can get through all of the questions. So try to keep the deep philosophical stuff to a minimum. But uh, I think we can get to everybody, which is always great. Yeah. In other words, please don't get creepy. Oh, man. Okay, so my name is Brent. Uh, I'm Brent. You a Hellraiser? Say what? Are you a Hellraiser? Uh, the Crow. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm off. I'm old. I lose track of franchises. Sorry, what were you saying? <laughs> so, uh, you know, I was like 11, and I thought you said something a little bit ago. I, I assumed you guys were like 18 years old, 19 years old, playing 15-year-olds in the movie. And, you know, that's how you got away with a lot of the scenes and stuff. Well, was there ever a moment where, like, maybe your parents or something that signed the waiver said, hey, you know, maybe I shouldn't let my kid do this, or, you know? Dude, and the, that, see, now, now, I was 11 when I saw this. Now I have kids, and so, you know, the, the brain, you know. Yeah, in the 80s, it was different. We were just all, like, <laughs> running through the streets feral, you know? You know what I mean? Like, as long as, like, we didn't bother people in the wrong way, like, nobody cared. <laughs> Hi, over here. Hi, my name is Lucas, and my question is, do you ever get to hang out with the Iron Man? <laughs> That's Lucas, all you care about. I know. Lucas, how long have you been working at NASA? Just tell us. Yeah, well, I, well, I do. I do know Iron Man still, yeah. He's a good guy. And uh, I'll see him in a few more weeks. Is that your favorite Marvel hero? My second to best. Second to best? Who's your first? Captain America. I understand you, both of them are in a movie this weekend. Like a yeah, little do you have any end game spoilers film. for us? Or? I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I mean, it's, to say the movie exists is not a spoiler. 
Thank you, Lucas. Lucas, I'll say hi to Iron Man for you, okay? okay. <laughs> hi. Hey guys, Joe from uh, Virginia. Hi, Joe, Joe from Virginia. Hi, Joe. When you were doing the ritual scene, bringing Lisa up, was that all ad lib, the bras on the head, the chanting, or was that in the script? I'm trying to remember that the other day. Do you recall? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the, like the bras on the head were definitely, uh, like that was written in the script. I remember reading that. But, um, but I think it was, it was it, uh, as somebody who was a little bit outside of the relationship between John and Mike, um, I was able to kind of see how they worked together. And um, a lot of the seamlessness of that scene was John setting up you to do what you do, right? And so, um, so like the chanting and, and that kind of thing was definitely ad lib, but it took place in a very structured framework. Gotcha. Great, thank you. Thank well you. put. Oh, yeah. I'm good at words. <laughs> Hi, over here. Hi. Hi, I'm Jennifer. I'm from Earth. Um, <laughs> Hi, Jennifer. It's the best I could come up with. Um, this, this question is primarily for Kelly, but it's really for all of you. Um, I feel like even today, there aren't that many really gorgeous women who aren't afraid to look ridiculous and do just real, real comedy on, on the screen. And I, I really enjoyed your characterization, and I wondered if you had any kind of takes on how people reacted to you at the time and how our thoughts on, on that whole topic, I guess. I love men throwing themselves at me. <laughs> <laughs> it feels nice. Yeah, but funny, being funny with, and being physically funny, I mean, was that, did you enjoy doing that or? I think the greatest gift that you can have is to make people laugh and you can never take yourself too seriously. And I grew up with parents that took the mickey out of me and I took it out of them and it was never a problem. I think that we have a very big sense of humor in England uh, that is different, doesn't always translate. Um, but I, fun is fun. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, over here. Hello. Uh, Hi. I'm, Hi. <laughs> hello. I'm Roseanne from Maryland. Love you all. Hi, Roseanne. Hi, Roseanne. <laughs> uh, question. So, if you had a magical computer program today, what type of ideal person would you create? Or what characteristics or features would they have? I think I'd get rid of a few people. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Really? I would create um, uh, like a super-powered assassin who would follow me everywhere that I went and, um, and project my, my uh, soundtrack. <laughs> that got weird. Okay. <laughs> so you have the high pressure job of finishing up and taking us out. So please. Hi, I'm Marianne from Philadelphia. Hi, Marianne. Nice to Hi, meet you. Hi, Marianne. Hi. So in the movie, you made the perfect lady. So if there was one thing in the world you want to make perfect, what would it be? <laughs> Nothing I can talk about. <laughs> Uh, just Good night, everybody. <laughs> Thanks very much. No, 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 you got six more seconds. You're contracted to be here. Uh, I, this I would, has been awesome. Come. I would like people to um, be able to identify however they want to identify and love who they want to love, and I'd like that to be respected. Yeah. Oh, we are saying... All right. We're set, we're set, we're set. We're Guys, good. thank you all. Oh, Without yeah. you, we're not here. We joining love us. you. We love you. Thank you. We hope you had fun. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. You can subscribe here to so subscribe to the channel. There's more videos off to the left. And Mr. J says, don't forget to ring that bell button for more notifications.